Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Mariana and today we will be discussing diabetic complications. Now, I already did a video um, a few days ago about the overview of diabetes and how that occurs. So if you haven't seen it, I will link it down below. But today we're gonna take it a step further and we're gonna discuss um, complications that happen secondary to diabetes. Don't worry about taking notes. You will find all the study notes and cheat sheets on my blog, thenursingjournal.com. So let's get started, okay? Today, we will be discussing acute diabetic complications, right? And what I mean by acute diabetic uh, complications is that these situations are things that are gonna happen within a few minutes, okay? And if you do not take action right away, these can be life-threatening situations, right? And there are three um, there are three main problems that can happen. So the first one over here, this is hypoglycemia, okay? Then we have the second one here, this is diabetic ketoacidosis, and our third one, which is hyperglycemia, hyperosmolar state, okay? And all of these issues are gonna be very serious and you're gonna have to take immediate action. Let's take them one by one. The first one, hypoglycemia. So what hypoglycemia is, is basically a very low blood glucose level. Now, how do we check the blood glucose? Well, we have our blood glucose monitor here, okay? You prick the patient, get some blood, and from the blood, you will be able to tell your patient's blood glucose level. Now, our normal level is anywhere between four to eight millimoles per liter. Anything more than that is too high, anything less than that is too low. Too high has its own issues, but now we are discussing too low, hypoglycemia, okay? And there are different levels of hypoglycemia. The level one is between 3.1 to 3.9 millimoles per liter. And with this um, level here, your patient is gonna be a bit sweaty, he might confuse a few words, da da da. I mean, it's hypoglycemia, it's not good, but don't panic, okay? This is not terribly bad. If your patient can eat or drink, give him a sugary drink, give him something to eat, and he will be good in no time, okay? But if your patient cannot eat, then you might wanna start a glucose infusion. So speak with the medical team and see if you wanna change the IVI, the infusion, into a glucose infusion. Then we have level two. And level two hypoglycemia is between three millimoles um, per liter to 2.8 millimoles per liter. And this is where you're gonna start to, whew, now you should be worried, okay? Because this, your patient might lose consciousness any minute now, okay? So take immediate action. Again, if your patient is still talking to you, if he can eat, then give him some sugary drink, give him something, you know, to get the blood glucose up. If he cannot drink, again, call the medical team, you're gonna wanna start a glucose infusion, okay? Anything between five, percent to ten percent you should be good and then there's level three and this okay this is when you have to worry here less than 2.8 millimoles per liter your patient is unconscious by now okay he is on the floor you have to do something right so right away put your patient to safety um start in like change the ivi infusion if he has iv excess you're gonna wanna give a uh, glucose infusion. And in really um, worst case scenarios, you might also have to use a glucagon injection, okay? But you have to be careful. There is um, contraindications to it. There are patients who cannot take glucagon. So always consult with the medical team and your senior nurses, right? So these are the three levels of hypoglycemia, okay? And quick recap, hypoglycemia is low blood glucose. Okay, the second complication is diabetic ketoacidosis. So what we're saying here is that because the body has a very high um, blood glucose level, okay, so the glucose is in the blood, then the cells are starving. And because the cells are starving, the body will start to break down fats, right? So it will initiate the liver and the liver will break down fats and store them into ketones and ketones are going to be the fuel, right? So they're gonna give energy to the body. But ketones in the blood make the blood very acidic. And if you're wondering, acidic blood is not good at all, okay? That's gonna cause a 
series of complications. So you don't want that, okay? We're not gonna talk so much about it. All you have to, to know up until now is that diabetic ketone acidosis is caused by the breakdown of fats into ketones and ketones cause acid. Now, the final complication, okay? We have hyperglycemia, hyperosmolar state. I got it right finally <laughs> and with this complication here what happens is that your patient has most likely had a high blood glucose level for quite a few days okay and as we said in the other lecture glucose is osmotically active so it attracts water right and because it attracts water your patient is gonna pee a lot okay like a lot <laughs> and if your patient is gonna pee too much then that is going to lead to dehydration and dehydration can cause confusion can cause a lot of problems okay so again that is going to be another life-threatening situation and that's it those are the three main acute complications of diabetes let's recap number one hypoglycemia low blood sugar number two dka um, ketones from fats which are gonna make your blood acidic and number three, HHS. This is going to cause your patient to pee and be dehydrated. Thank you so much for watching. I will make another video explaining the chronic complications. In the meantime, go check out my blog, thenursingjournal.com. There's all the study notes and cheat sheets over there. And if you wanna keep updated, subscribe to my channel, hit like and follow me on my social media. So thank you again and until then, Take care, happy studying.